us to be able to stand in your presence knowing that we belong. We're glad we are called by your name. And God, we pray even now that you will speak your word. God, our desire is that, God, we receive your word and we do your word. God, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be God is good all the time. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at 1 John chapter 3. First John 3. And we're going to look at verses 23 and 24. Thank you, Jesus. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he hath given us. Dear community, I thank God for today. I thank God for the opportunity that my family and I have to celebrate Jesus with you. We've been with you several times throughout this first half of the year and um, two weeks in a row. God is so good. And I don't know the next time we'll be together. So I just want to admonish you quickly with a few things. I will encourage you, I will encourage us that as we walk with the Lord, that we trust, that we love, and that we continue. What are we going to do? We are going to trust, we're going to and we're going to continue. Hallelujah. If we look at verse 23 again, it says, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. When John writes that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, he's not just talking about believing that he exists. It's not just about the cognitive. It's, it's not that there's a Jesus out there. That's fact. <laughs> but when John writes this, he says that we should trust that everything that he says he is, he is in our lives. It's not simply that the Lord Jesus Christ exists. But everything that exists in his identity, right, is extended to me. Everything that exists in the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ extends to us. So that's why we can say he's not just a protector, but he is my protector. He's not just a deliverer. It's factual. It's scriptural that he is, but he's my deliverer. So this belief, this trust, takes it off the page of God's word, and it puts it into my everyday experience. Saints, I want you to know today that you can trust Jesus completely. Everything that you need, he is. Not just he has, but everything you need, he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't take my word for it. Let's look at scripture. Let's look at Psalms chapter 9. Psalms 9. 
Psalms 9, and we're going to look at verse 10. The psalmist said very clearly, those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. The reason why we go to God no matter what's going on is because we know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. If we didn't know that, we wouldn't go. But the writer in Psalms says, those who know your name, they go to you, and they know that you'll never forsake them. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 18. I know we know this one. Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Now that by itself is great. But I love this next part. The righteous run in and are safe. So he's not just a strong tower, but I know that when I'm in trouble and I run to him, I have safety. So again, I can completely trust Jesus because everything that I need is found in my relationship with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. I need us, as we go through the rest of this year, I need us to trust. No matter what comes up, saints, no matter what we face, trust God. If we haven't yet said yes to the Lord, take it from me. I have learned in my life, the best decision in my life was saying yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I found that everything I need is in the Lord Jesus. Not in me, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, hallelujah. So we clear? We can trust Jesus completely. Now, the next thing is we're going to love. As diligently and as fervently as we trust the Lord Jesus, with that same mind, we must love one another. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I got some smiles. With that same determination, we must love one another. We know that we find our identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. We just read that. But the world knows who we are based on our love. We know who we are in Jesus, but they'll know who we are based on how we treat them. So it's not just enough for us to be in here and we worship and praise, but we've got to make sure that the world can see Jesus by the way we love. Because the reality is, we will be known by our love. My father, Elder Johnny Johnson, before he went on to be with the Lord, he used to tell me every day, and you would think, he would say, son, you know, make sure you preach well and make sure the church keeps going. And I, I know that was in his heart, but you know what my father would tell me every day? Make sure you love your wife and love them boys. Because he knew that I could stand up here and preach all day. But if I don't love my boys, that's what they're going to see. Scripture says you can preach and sing and talk and speak in tongues. But the scripture says if you don't have love, it's like noise. Now, I know some of you sitting there say, you don't know the people in my life that I got to show love to. If you knew the people I was dealing with, you, you'd cut me some slack. <laughs> but I love what the scripture says here in 1 John. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4.
Verse 20, verse 21, that's right. 1 John 4, 21, and this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. We can be confident in our love for God. We can be sure in our love for God. But what the scripture is saying here is just like we know that we love God. And if you wake me up at four in the morning and say, do you love the Lord? I'd say yes. The writer is saying just like you love God, you must love your brother also. Let's go back to John, St. John. Let's look at 13. Let's see how we do this. St. John 13. Even with my glasses on, I can't see. God is, God is good, amen. When, when y'all are praying tonight, and you want to think of what to pray for me for, pray for vision. <laughs> but he says, a new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. The Lord isn't asking us to do anything that he hasn't done to us first. The love that we're giving to others is the love that he's already shown to us. So when we say that the Lord loved me and cast my sin all the way into the sea of forgetfulness, then that means when my brother wrongs me, I must be able to forgive and forget. Yeah, yeah, forgive and forget. Because all I'm doing is exhibiting the love that Jesus gave me first. Now, the other thing that we have to remember is, as 1 John 3 said, we live with the Spirit of God within us. Everything that we do is empowered by the presence of Almighty God. So as I live my life, I know that I can do all things through Christ. Now the last thing that I'm encouraging us to do, while we are trusting, while we are loving, the next thing that we must do is we have to continue. The Bible says that we are not called to be lukewarm. Right? It says, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He said, I'd rather that you be hot or cold. We're not called to be lukewarm. But we're called to continue with all diligence. Let's look at St. John chapter 15. See what this looks like. And we're looking at verse 5. St. John 15, verse 5. I love the way Jesus clarifies how we do what we do. It's important. I, I'm one of those folks, I like to get the directions. So Jesus puts it right out front, I am the vine. Can I get an amen for that? I am the vine, you are the branches. Yes, so that tells me off the bat that all I have to do is hang on to the vine. Oh my goodness. You don't walk past a tree and hear sounds, do you? You don't hear, you don't, 
You don't hear branches mustering up the strength to bear fruit. All they have to do is stay on the tree that's attached to the vine, and they will bear fruit. So as I'm telling you to trust, as I'm telling you to love, as I'm telling you to continue, I'm going to tell you how you do it. You do it by recognizing that Jesus is the vine, you are the branch, and then he says, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And then he makes a, a factual statement. For without me, you can do nothing. But what's the inverse of this? But through me, you can do all things. Ah, y'all there with me. You must have been writing notes together. Everything that you need to do in this life, saints, you have the ability to do because you are attached to the vine. And the Bible says that you will bear much fruit. Hmm. I realize that there are times that we go through difficulty. And as we talked about last week, there are times when we've got to look over the distractions. Amen? Remember, we said last week that we're going to have to go climb a tree by faith. We've, we've got to go to God's word because what we see in front of us seems to be a contradiction to God's word. It doesn't seem like we're overcomers. It doesn't seem like we're healed. It doesn't seem like we're prosperous. But saints, let me tell you that this word says that as long as I abide, the fruit of a relationship with God is going to come through my life. And as you go through those situations, don't be frustrated. Don't be discouraged. That's when you anchor down and having done all to stand, you just stand. Let's look at one more scripture. Let's look at St. John's 8. We're going to look at verse 31 and 32. God's spirit lives in us, and he works through us. So what is my part? What do I need to do? Jesus made it very clear. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How do I live in freedom? I abide in God's word. Saints, as we're studying God's word, and we have to study God's word, this is not something that we just take up on Sundays. It's not going to be good enough because if I'm going to live by God's word, I need to know what it says. <laughs> and I don't just live on Sundays. So I got to open God's word on Wednesday so I can know what I'm going to live on Wednesday. Go to God's word so that you can see who he is, see you, who you are, and then continue in that. And he says if you continue in that, you will know the truth, and the truth will cause you to be free. As I said before, I wasn't always saved. I came to the point where I said, you know what? I want this truth. There are a lot of different things floating around, but I want the truth that, that can make me free. And I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And since that day, I've understood freedom because I understood who I am in his word. 
Like I said at the onset, Marilyn, Tim, Mark, and I, we love you. We appreciate that we are family, and I plan on seeing you soon. But if we can love each other without compromise. Remember, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. We may wrong each other, but that doesn't mean that we won't love each other. We will trust God, trust him with everything in our heart, knowing that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And finally, regardless of what we face, we will continue in the truth, knowing that that truth will make us free. Can we commit to that? Can we commit to one another? Can we commit to God that we are going to love each other, we're going to trust him, and we're going to abide? Are you with me? Let's look to the Lord. Father, we love you. We so appreciate you, God. We appreciate your word. God, we appreciate that we can get together and talk about you because, God, we realize that as we understand who you are, that is the faith that propels us to live this life. Because, God, we are the vine. You are the vine. And as long as we stay attached to you, God, we will bear much fruit. God, we know that we've been called to be ambassadors. So, God, we've got to love those around us so that they can know that we are your disciples. And, God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you'll use us to the building of your kingdom. God, we trust that this word is going to take root in our lives that it's going to grow, God, and produce a hundredfold. God, we have committed to live for you. So God, hold us close. Bless us. Bless our families. Bless those who are here and those who aren't here. Give them their portion of blessings. For all these things, God, we thank you in advance, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.